Hello family, this is Pastor Winfield here and I am so excited to be coming to you again this morning. I believe that there is a word with your name on it as I always do and I believe that God is wanting to speak to you in the area of assignments. That's what the word of the Lord is today. We'll be talking about assignments. Do you know that you do not choose your assignments? Assignments choose you and that your purpose may remain the same all the days of your life but your assignments will change. That's right, today is your day of freedom because you're gonna be freed up to be able to move on in the things and the places and spaces that God is calling for you to move on to. Some of you have been procrastinating your own personal life and now is the day, now is the time that you're gonna move on in the assignment that God has given to you. I'm excited about this word. Gather people around your computer screen, gather people around your telephone, wherever you're listening to this from and I want you to be blessed because God is about to come to you and speak to you about your assignments. Let's go to service and we'll be back here to pray for you after the service is over. Peace. Put those hands together.
16th chapter, verses 6 through 10. It says, they passed through Phrygian and Galatian region, having been forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak the word in Asia. And after they came to Mycenae, they were trying to go into Bithynia. And the Spirit of Jesus did not permit them. And passing by Mycenae, they came down to Troas. And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. A man of Macedonia was standing and appealing to him and saying, come over to Macedonia and help us. And when he had seen the vision, immediately we sought to go into Macedonia. Concluding, somebody holler out, concluding. Concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. Let's skip all the way down, chapter 17, skip all the way down to verses 16 and 17. It says, now while Paul was waiting for them at Athens, his spirit was being provoked within him as he was observing the city full of idols. His spirit was being provoked. His spirit was being provoked. His spirit was being provoked within him as he was observing the city full of idols. So he was reasoning in the synagogue with the Jews and the God-fearing Gentiles and in the marketplace every day with those who happened to be present. I want to talk to you today from this thought for the whole month of of June we have been talking about transformative people and today I want to talk to you our last installment from this thought assignment factors assignment factors I want you to give five people a fist bump let them know what we're talking about today tell them assignment factors Amen. Amen. If you don't mind, I want to, I want to a little bit uh, give you an understanding of a word that many of you may not have heard me to preach and to teach on it. Some of you may be new. There are others of you who have been around me for a long period of time, been around the church for a long period of time. And so you've heard me talk about assignments and the difference between purpose and assignment. Your purpose is the thing that you are called to do on the face of this earth. Your purpose does not change. It is consistent throughout the course of your life. Purposes do not change, but assignments do. So you can have the same purpose, but have a different assignment depending on what season of life that you may find yourself in. Oftentimes, we, we don't understand that just because God has given to us a particular purpose, it does not mean that you're going to have the same assignment all the days of your life. Assignments change. Somebody say assignments change. I got a definition that I want us to kind of work from. Uh, it says an, an assignment is a task or duty to which one is appointed. You can be appointed to different positions in different seasons of your life okay and so just because you are assigned to one thing at one point of your life it does not mean that you're going to be assigned to the same thing at another point of your life it's almost like being a teacher when I was in the classroom and I was teaching uh, uh, many of the students had a particular purpose all of the students have a particular purpose the purpose is to learn everything that you're supposed to learn from my classroom so that you can matriculate on to receive to receive um, 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 uh, your degree or a diploma and in the context of receiving your degree or your diploma to be able to then graduate somebody say graduate so the purpose was to know or learn as much as you can so that you can graduate that was the purpose. However, in my classroom, I had many assignments that the students had to do and had to fulfill in order for them to really fulfill their purpose. They wouldn't be able to fulfill their purpose if they didn't do my assignments. 
And so every assignment was a key that they were willing and ready to move on. If they did not do the assignment that I was asking for them to do, for whatever reason, they could not get the grade that they needed in order for them to move on. And many of you are under the sound of my voice and your life seemingly has stalled because you have not done the assignment that God has called for you to do in this season of your life. In other words, your life is on pause because of your procrastination. Y'all still with me? I'm going to teach just for a second. Uh, your life is on pause because of your procrastination. In other words, whatever you procrastinate and whenever you procrastinate from doing the thing that God has assigned you to do, you cannot move on from there because God does not move you on based off, your, off of your prayer. He moves you on based off of your obedience. So I don't care how much you pray, I don't care how much you fast, God will not move you beyond the level of your obedience. If you don't obey him in where you are right now, then you will never be able to get to the next place where he wants you to be. And so you will look at your life as being dead and or mundane and or, and or typical and or cyclical and or the same or saying I must be stuck in a rut. And anytime when you feel like life is sticking you in a rut, you've got to look at yourself in the mirror to determine whether or not you did everything God was telling for you to do or calling for you to do in this season. Somebody holler out, I got to obey, I got to obey, I got to obey, I got to obey. I don't care how much you name it to try and claim it, you'll never be able to get it until your obedience lines up with what it is he is telling you to do. You cannot get to your, uh, your destiny without obedience. You cannot get to your breakthrough without obedience if you don't obey God in the assignments of your life then you'll never be able to graduate uh, and so in the church we have people in the church who have been saints for a long time in the church but they have not moved outside of where they used to be you've been in church for 25 years and you still get the same revelation you still get the same word everybody else has moved on from elementary principles of Christ and teaching uh, and here you are still at the milk stage because you can't handle strong meat for the Bible says that strong meat are for those who by reason of use have had at their senses exercise to discern between what is good and what is evil so he says by now you ought to be teachers but you have need to be taught and some of you are still at the student stage because you don't want to grow up to become a teacher and you're old enough to become a teacher. I can't get no talk in here. You're old enough to be able to be teaching somebody about your faith. But the very fact that you can't teach somebody about your faith says that you have grown deformed, defunct, and you have... Um, uh, become remedial and it's time for you to be in remedial classes of what it is to be a Christian. I can't get no talk now. And so oftentimes there is going to be a generation that is going to come up before the Lord uh, that is going to be used to remedial classes. Remedial words, warmed over words, microwavable words, words that will give you uh, a saying and a niche, words that will make you feel good instead of words that will challenge you about where you are. Y'all, That's remedial. See, real words from the Lord will challenge you to change. Yeah. And this is a principle that I think we all need to understand. Here is the other piece. That assignments, because they are always changing based on season, then needs to be discerned. Assignments, because they are changing based off of seasons, need to be discerned. So oftentimes, you don't know what God is telling you to do right now in this season. If I told you right now that God has an assignment on your life and you're supposed to be doing something, could you tell me exactly what that something is? If your answer is no, that means that you've been living life beneath your privileges because the people of God and kingdom people operate by assignment. 
We don't operate by obligation. We operate by assignment. In other words, when my assignment is up, I don't care how much you pay me, I got to bounce because my assignment is up. See, some of the world operates by pay. We operate by obedience. We don't need the pay or we love the pay, but we don't need the pay because our God is our employer. Y'all don't hear me today. And when it's time for to, to leave, you've got to be able to leave. You've got to be able to do the thing that God is calling for you to do and not be in bondage to people's emotionalism to keep you right where they want you to be. Because if you're not careful, people will keep you at the same level all the days of your life to make them feel good about being complacent about theirs. Uh, Y'all going to stay with me just for a moment. And so we find in this text a very powerful principle concerning assignment. Everybody say assignment. assignment. Say it again. Say assignment. assignment. Let, let, let me just teach background and context a little bit because I extrapolate my points based upon the context of this particular uh, 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 missionary journey. Let me, let me first start off by telling you uh, that, that this is Paul's second missionary journey. He had a first missionary journey in chapters 13 through 15, uh, but then those missionary journeys were completed. We now enter into, in chapter 16, 16 through 18, his second missionary journey. And there are things that have changed about his journey. <laughs> the first thing that has changed about his journey uh, uh, is, is, is the fact that he can't go where he wants to go. The Bible says in chapter 16 uh, that he, he wanted to go, he wanted to go to Asia. He wanted to preach in Asia, but, but, but the Holy Spirit forbade him not to go, blocked it, and said he could not close that door that he couldn't go in. And then he said that, 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 that because he couldn't go in that door, that he, he wanted to then go into Bithynia and, and preach, but the Spirit of Jesus uh, forbade him not to go in there. And so he is led down to Troas until he, until he figures out where he needs to go. And you don't understand that the reason why certain doors have been closed in your life is so that you can figure out where he wants you to go. Oh, God. This is what it is to have an assignment. I don't choose my assignment. My assignment chooses me. And many of us in this world that we live in love to choose the very thing that we're called to. Uh, you choose your calling and you tell God what you're called to do instead of listening to God about what he has called you to do. You listen to your friends long enough to tell you and to set you up for failure to make you feel like you're more than what, you, what God has called you to be. And here you are running off to try to do that and be that. And the reason why the door is closed is because that's not the thing that God has called you to be or to become and sometimes you're going to have to be submitted enough to God to allow for the assignment to choose you oh God oh God oh God so the assignment needs to choose you you don't choose it it chooses you the Bible declares then that the doors were shut they go down to Troas and when they go to Troas that there was a vision that Paul has Paul has a vision, and in the vision, there was a man from Macedonia that said, come over to Macedonia and help us. Mm. Come over to Macedonia and help us. Specific. Come over to Macedonia and help us. But I got a heart to help, help everybody. No. Come over to Macedonia and help us. Because the problem with you is that you're helping too many people. That's why you get depressed. That's why you get tired. That's why you get burnt out. Because instead of helping the specific people that God has told you to help, you feel like you got to help everybody. But even Jesus did not minister to everybody. Jesus did not heal everybody. I'm trying to help you. So you with your Jesus self want to do more than even what Jesus did. And the reason why people get burnt out is because they're doing too much. Oh, God. Oh, God. 
Slap somebody a high five and tell them, you're doing too much. You're doing too much. You're doing too much. The only thing that is required right now is what my assignment is. And I'm sorry if you want me to come over there. I can't come over there right now because God told me you are not my assignment. Now, God is so God that one of the things that people would try to manipulate you in thinking is that if you don't help them, then they can't be helped. But God says, I got other people that is assigned to you, and you're not one of them. So in, 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 instead of you doing the work, you need to pray that God will send them the one who is assigned to them, and you need to have enough discernment to say, baby, I am not the one. I'm just trying to help somebody. I am not the one. I cannot help. I can help heal the world, but I can't heal the whole world by myself. I can't do this by myself. I need to understand what my assignment is so that trying to help you will not kill me. All right. Y'all still with me? All right. I got 22 minutes to travel this now, so. So the Bible says that he has a vision, and the vision says, come over to Macedonia and help us. Let me give you my first point. First point of, of assignment is assignments are assistance-oriented. Assistance-oriented. The anointing on your life is to help somebody else. That's why you will find that many people who have a grace to help somebody else struggle in the thing that they're trying to help somebody else through. I can't get no. <laughs> because the grace that you got is not for you. I'm, I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to deliver you from beating yourself up, saying, why can I help everybody else? But I can't. I got a vision for everybody else's life, but I don't even have a vision for mine. I can help everybody else with their book, but I can't get around to writing mine. I can help. Why? Because the grace that is on your life is for somebody else. It's not for you. And you will get help when you sow it. In other words, you're going to have to be able to assist somebody so that you yourself can be assisted. Are you hearing, are you hearing me? Uh, 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 this, this assignment on your life is assistance oriented. You are here to assist. <laughs> Not to sit, but to assist. Uh, somebody going to get in just a moment. <laughs> You come to church. Why do you come to church? I come to church to hear a word and I'm going to go home. But you never assist. In church, we complain more about stuff that we are the ones that are called to assist in. Uh, so you, you complain about the parking. But how about you put on a yellow jacket and get out there and start helping what you're complaining about? In fact, I'm going to give you an assignment. Right? I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you how you know it's your assignment. The very thing that frustrates you is the very thing that you are assigned to. <laughs> the parking lot attendants are like, yes, sir. Yes, sir. We need more help. Come over to the parking lot and help us. Your assignment is assistance oriented. Let me give you the second thing, second point. Your assignments have people attached to them. Let me, let me show you through the text that may not be readily seen, but I'm just going to give you the context of understanding here. I told you that this is Paul's second missionary journey. There are places that he went in the first missionary journey that God does not allow for him to go in the second missionary journey. There are people that were with him in the first missionary journey <laughs> that can't accompany him in the second missionary journey. So in the first missionary journey, it was Paul, Barnabas, uh, Silas, and John Mark. 
right? But because of a situation that happened after the, the, at the end of the first missionary journey, uh, there was an argument that happened uh, because John Mark in the, in the middle of the first missionary journey ha- uh, got, got so burnt out he couldn't handle the stress and the pressure of it. So he left them by themselves and went back home. And so now we're in the second missionary journey and Barnabas is like, well, are we bringing John Mark? And Paul is like, we ain't bringing him anymore. Because now he can hang with you, but I need some real people who's not going to quit and give up in the middle of a fight. Y'all don't hear me today. And there was such an argument between Paul and Barnabas that they separated to the point where Paul entered his second missionary journey without Barnabas, come on, and without John Mark. I wish I had time to tell you how powerful that is. Because Barnabas is the one that ministered to Paul. (laughs) When Paul was depressed because of how he was being treated, he went back to Tarsus. And when Barnabas had heard that there was a a Holy Ghost outbreak that happened in Antioch, and the uh, the Jerusalem council said, somebody, we need to send somebody down there. And Barnabas said, I'll go, but can I get somebody to come with? me they say go get whoever you want to get and Barnabas went to Tarsus found Paul who was depressed because of how he was being treated and turned him back on the ministry and said come with me on this first uh, in this first mission and the Bible declares that because of an argument they separated in other words the one oh God the one that brings you into it may not be the one that you walk with in the next phase of your life Okay, I'm trying to help somebody out in here because many of you will walk with people for too long. And God allowed for there to be an argument to separate who was supposed to go on this trip. Y'all don't hear me today because everybody can't go with you on this next assignment in your life. I'm trying to help you. Everybody can't go with you on this next assignment in your life. There are going to be some people that are going to fall off. And when they fall off, let them fall off because they can't handle where you're going. Yeah. <laughs> this, this, this Paul then separates from Barnabas. He has Paul with a Saul, a Silas with him. And then he goes by Lystra. When he goes to Lystra, he finds this young man who is, who is serious about the call that's on his life, but he can't minister but just to Gentiles because his father is a Gentile and his mother is a Jew. So he says, now I know that I'm called to help you to become everything that God is calling for you to become. So the Bible says that he took Timothy, he circumcised Timothy, and Timothy became a part of his team. Because on this next missionary journey, on this next assignment, you got to see who you are called to mentor. There's somebody in your life, oh God, who is assigned to you to mentor. Somebody that you're supposed to be pouring into and somebody that is supposed to be, uh, that you are supposed to be helping to become everything that God is calling for them to become. And when you find out who your Timothy is, then you can get a vision. Because now when he goes to Troas, he's got Timothy and he's got Silas, but the team is not complete. Because the, because the commentators would say that when they get to Troas, then Luke, the physician, the one that wrote the book of Acts, comes down to Troas. And when all of them are together, then he gets a vision. Uh, somebody going to get in just a moment. When all of them are together, then he gets a vision. Yeah. When the right people get on your team. Then God will open up the windows and show you, uh, God. But the reason why you don't know is because you got the wrong people on your team. Mm -hmm. All right, I got 14 minutes. I'm going to land it. Now, when they get the right people, then they set out. They set out to Philippi. They go to Philippi. They're... There is a situation that happens in Philippi that Paul is preaching while he's preaching. There is a woman that is possessed. (laughs) She comes to Paul. Paul casts the devil out of her. 
When Paul cast the devil out of her, he changes the economic stability of that particular town in Philippi because the people were getting rich off of her demon possession. And when Paul changes the economic uh, stratosphere of that particular town, then the people uh, get in an uproar and the Bible says that they flog him and then they put him and Silas in jail. When they put them in prison, the Bible says that they prayed and praised. And at midnight, there was a great earthquake that came. And the prison doors opened up and their bands were loosed. And everybody else that was with them, that was connected with them, ran free. And the Philippian jailer came in and said, is there anybody else in here? Because if you're not here, I'm going to kill myself. And Paul and Silas, who could have ran free, stayed right there because they had an assignment. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, every time when God gives you an opportunity to run, it is not the time for you to run. It is time for you to look around to see who is God given to you to bless before you go. You cannot leave the place the same way it was before you got there. You're going to have to bless somebody while you are there. It's good for you to be free, but your freedom is supposed to lead to a testimony that is supposed to deliver somebody else. And you got to know when to run and when to stay. Yes, yes. He stayed there. Minister to the Philippian jailer. The Philippian jailer said, what must I do to be saved? They ministered to him, and then the Philippian jailer takes them home. And then his whole household got saved. And then they leave. In chapter 17, they go to Thessalonica, to Berea, and then to Athens. They go to Thessalonica, and when they preach in Thessalonica, and I'm hastening to my third point, when he goes to Thessalonica, the Bible declares that, that some of the devout Jews heard him preach. And there were people, there were people who were both Gentile and Jew that listened to Paul and said that we're going to follow you. We're going to follow you. We're going to follow you because, because this word that you're preaching is, 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 is truth to us. But then there were devout Jews that listened to the same thing and decided to chase them. Mm -hmm. So that night they were trying to find them and they went down to Jason's house because Jason was housing them and couldn't find them because they had found out what they were trying to do. So they had sent Paul and Silas on to Berea and while they sent them on to Berea, the ones that was trying to chase Paul uh, and Silas had found Jason, dragged Jason in front of the council and had a deal with Jason so that Jason won't do that anymore even though he did do it some more and, 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 and they then watched went on from there and if you read uh, the, uh, the Berean part that those same Jews came from Thessalonica to Berea chasing Paul and Silas because your assignment has enemies <laughs> oh God okay all right <laughs> Let me appeal to, to some of you who will understand what I'm about to say. Have you ever got to a place in your life in which you said yes to God? And as soon as you said yes to God, all hell starts breaking loose in your life? Okay, remember the time, remember the time when you got saved and you used to pray and everything used to work out for you, uh, but you still was on the fence about how you were going to live. And, uh, and then as soon as you say, no, I'm going to live for God and I'm going to do this thing right, things started getting worse. I'm trying to help you. The reason why it gets worse is because your assignment has enemies and you've got to know how to handle the enemies that are chasing you. Are you hearing me? All right. Let, let me give you some enemies. I'm going to give you eight enemies. I'm going to give you eight enemies. Give, give me the first enemy. Give me the first enemy. Uh, the first enemy, uh, and these are destiny wasters. The first enemy, there are forces that will incapacitate you through sickness. Have you ever found yourself saying, I am willing to serve God, and all of a sudden the doctor brings you a bad report? I mean, you wasn't expecting it. You just went on your regular checkup and routine, and here comes the doctor bringing you a bad report saying that you can't do certain things because now there's a sickness in your body, and you got to be able to bind the devil and say, uh uh, no, no, not now. This is just an enemy to my assignment. I'm called to do this, and the enemy is trying to incapacitate me. He's trying to get me not to be able to move because he wants me to feel sorry for myself. I remember, I remember when I, when, when, when the church was at a place. 
place of growth. And while it was at, at a place of growth and generating, I was playing ball and I ripped my Achilles. And I ripped my Achilles and I was like, oh my God, we were right in the place of growth. And the doctor said that we're going to have to operate, but you're going to have to, you can't preach. Uh, you can't preach at least for a month. I said, the devil is a liar. I said, what I need for you to do is wrap this thing up. And if I got to preach in a chair, I will preach in a chair. And they brought a stool up in. Y'all remember that? They brought a stool up in here. And I was up in here preaching just like this while my foot was elevated. Because I will not let anything stop me from fulfilling my assignment in the earth. Oh, God. Oh, God. The devil has got the right one. I'm crazy and cuckoo like that. Oh, God. I will fight back. Forces that incapacitate you. Give, give me the second one. Give me the second one. Forces that impoverish you. It, 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 they impoverish you. They paralyze your effort. They induce laziness. They cause delay, divert blessings, and destroy favor. This is the kind of stuff, watch. This is the kind of stuff that causes for people to do stuff to you. <laughs> and here you are walking around with unforgiveness. Uh, uh, and now you are poor in your spirit because you got somebody else in your spirit that you will not let go and you are paralyzed because paralyzation looks like unforgiveness in the Bible All right. uh, that's why the Bible declares in the book of Mark that when the man was paralyzed that his friends lowered him down through the roof to see what Jesus was going to say to him and Jesus says uh, thy sins are forgiven take up your bed and walk and the Pharisees had a problem that Jesus would forgive the sin and he said well which one is easier to say your sins are forgiven or to say take up your bed and walk he said but, but so that you will know that the son of man is the son of God take up your bed and walk because your sins have been forgiven what I'm trying to help you to understand is you'll never be able to move as long as you keep on holding on to unforgiveness have you ever been in your assignment and been disappointed at somebody or be disappointed at a leader or be disappointed at a friend and you've got to be able to move on regardless of how you feel about them? Disappointment is a paralyzer. You're going to have to learn how to move past disappointment and do the thing that God is calling for you to do. Uh, give me the third one. Give me the third one. Forces that switch your dreams switch your dreams that make you do what you are not cut out for <laughs> there is nothing as devastating as traveling on the wrong road some of you will make your friends switch your dreams uh, the Bible declares that when Joseph told his brothers his dreams, that they tried to kill him because of his dreams. And some of you are afraid of what people are going to say about you because you dream that big. And so you try to belittle yourself and limit yourself around small-minded people who can't handle the big dream that God placed in your mind. I'm here today to tell you, don't let nobody diminish the dream that God gave you. If he gave it to you, he will accomplish it you will accomplish it if he gave it to you you'll be able to do it but don't let small-minded people pull your dream down Slap somebody a high five and say don't let small-minded people pull your dream down they change your dream right in the middle of it he called you to start a business and right in the middle of it they try to tell you to do something else other than what God told you to do don't let the enemy change your dream Fourth one, forces that sell, buy, or steal destiny. Ooh, God. In other words, somebody is trying to steal your dream. <laughs> Beware of people who are always asking you for your ideas. <laughs> okay, I know I got that part right. <laughs> uh, because there's somebody out there who will try and steal your birthright <laughs> because you're thirsty. Uh, in, in, in other words, in other words, beware of people who are so thirsty for what God gave you that they can't see what God gave them. And they attach themselves to you because there's something about you uh, that makes them feel good about themselves. That your ideas and your dreams is fueling their life. 
<laughs> be careful. Be careful. Look at somebody say, be careful. Be careful. Be careful. Forces that corrupt you through sex, drugs, and other addictions. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't fulfill your assignment if you are high. Okay. Can, can I go a little deeper? This may not be for everybody, but I just want to tell you what's going on out there. I've had the pleasure of ministering to musicians and ministering to people that are in the music industry. And, and, and there are people, there are people in the music industry who feels like that they can't be creative if they don't get high. And the problem with that is that many of them are Christian. So somebody told you that in order for you to be creative, you got to get high. That's what the world tells you, but the world don't tell you that all you need to be creative is to submit to God. Oh, God, he'll always be able to give you what you don't have if you just submit to him. But it is because of addictions and, and sex addictions and drug addictions and pornography and adultery and homosexuality and, and incestuous behaviors and molestation that holds you back. I know, I know some of y'all are cringing because I see the spirit on you. I know, yeah, yeah, but today that demon is going to get off you today because I'm going to preach him right off of you. When you start saying yes to God, you're going to have to start saying no to the thing that's got you addicted. And if I didn't say what your drug is, maybe your drug is your cell phone. Maybe your drug is Facebook. Maybe your drug is gossiping. Maybe your drug is hanging out with the wrong people in the wrong place at the wrong time. Uh, look at somebody and say, dismiss your drugs. Dismiss your drugs. You can't do the assignment of God on your life and your mind is not right. You need your whole mind. Oh God. You need your whole mind to do what God is telling you to do. You need your whole mind. You don't have time to be depressed. You need your whole mind. You don't have time to kill yourself. You need your whole mind. Sometimes you got to tell the devil, get off me devil. I will not die. Oh God. I'm here to do the work that God has called me to do. Wrong associations, wrong company, friendship, marriage, etc. There are four people in your life. Those who add, those who subtract, those who divide, and those who multiply. And you got to discern which ones are which. Stop hanging out with people that try to talk you down over the assignment that's on your life. I can't get no talk in here. You've got to be able to listen to people who can give you wisdom, but don't listen to people who all they do is give you constant discouragement. Give me the last, give me the last two. Wrong confessions. Somebody holler out wrong confessions. Words spoken over you have a bearing on the outcome of your life. And some of y'all didn't know that there have been witches and warlocks that have been trying to speak over you. Uh, yeah, I know, I know, I know. There have been some witches and warlocks trying to speak over this church. Uh, but they can't kill it because you can't kill what God has blessed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every devil in here, you can't kill it. You tried to snuff it out, but you still can't kill it. You tried to give it a scandal, but we're still here. Yeah, yeah, because you can't kill it. And every word that has been spoken over your life that was not in line with God's word for your life, you got to be able to overshadow and overcome that confession with your confession. It doesn't matter what you speak over me. It matters what I speak over myself. And, and if you say that I'm cursed, I'm going to say I'm blessed. Y'all don't hear me today. If you say that I'm the tail, I'm going to say I'm, no, I'm the head. Uh, I'm going to say I'm blessing the city and I'm blessing the field and I'm blessing my coming in and I'm blessing my going out and the fruit of my bounty is blessed and the works of my hands are blessed and my footsteps are ordered to be blessed and everything that I put my hands to do is blessed y'all don't hear me today you're gonna have to say what the enemy don't want you to say and the enemy has been trying to shut your mouth when he opens up his but you're gonna have to open up yours louder when the enemy starts whispering in your ear that you can't make it your praise needs to be louder that says i can do all through Christ that strengthens me. Hey, God, I feel like going to war right now. I feel that devil that's been trying to hinder you, uh, he's going to have to get his hands off of you. Oh, God, I feel like speaking over you. I speak over you life. I speak over you prosperity. 
I speak over you health. I speak over you healing. I speak over you wellness. I speak your relationships are blessed. I speak your family is blessed. I speak your finances are blessed. I speak over you in Jesus' name. If you receive that, holler out, I receive that. Come on and give God a glory and a praise right there. Oh, God, no, 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 no. No. Let, let me say it like this. Praise him on the level that you are being attacked. Oh, God. I said praise him on the level that you are being attacked. He tried to come after you. You better come after God. Yes! 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 Oh no, no. I'm gonna give you 20 more seconds. What I'm trying to help you to understand is as soon as you said yes, hell released her hounds and tried to chase after you. But just like Egypt tried to chase after the children of Israel, whatever they try to chase you into is going to kill them. That's why you got to keep on moving when the enemy is trying to chase you. He's about to chase you right into your destiny. He's about to chase you right into your purpose. He's about to chase you right into your assignment. I dare you to open up your mouth and give God. Come on in. Come on and pray. Yes. 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 I'm trying to teach you how to fight. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down every high thing and every imagination that tries to exalt itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought unto the obedience of Christ. I'm bringing my thoughts into obedience. We will serve the Lord. We will bless the Lord at all times. My praise shall continue to be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord. I need the right people on my team. I need the right people on my team. I need the right people on my team. Check your row and say, neighbor, are you the right person on my team that can handle this level of praise? I'm about to praise God until something shakes in our lives. Until whatever had us bound is going to have to let us go. I'm about to praise God until something happens. I'm about to praise God until I don't feel depressed anymore. I'm about to praise God until my children get saved. I'm about to praise God until my church gets delivered. I'm about to praise God until my body gets healed. Open up your mouth, all ye people, and go to pray. seconds. 
Come on, 20 more seconds. Come on, 20 more seconds. I feel something shifting. I feel something shifting. I feel something shifting. Yes! 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 your row and prophesy to everybody down your row and tell them I prophesy over you that your situation has just shifted tell them your situ tell them your situation has just shifted yeah your situation has just shifted it's just changed for you it's just changed for you it's just changed for you you're about to walk into a new life just as soon as we give the benediction you're about to walk into a new life a new situation is on the dawning. Listen. Oh God. I gotta go. Pastor Jay is coming. Listen. Everyone standing on your feet. Uh. I got to tell you something. I got to tell you something. When Paul and Silas, Luke and Timothy are in Thessalonica, the enemies that are trying to pursue them can't catch them. Because every time the enemy arrives on the scene the assignment shifted <laughs> some y'all will get this if you get this I'm telling you and if you shift with God <laughs> the enemy that is trying to pursue you will never catch you because God has a way of shifting your assignment before the devil ever gets his hands on you. Ah. They already did their damage. <laughs> they did damage to the kingdom of darkness and then they moved to the next assignment. They finished and they completed the assignment. Then they moved on to the next one. And by the time we get to verse 16 and 17, of chapter 17 Paul is now in Athens he is by himself and he is looking at the culture and the Bible says that he is provoked in his spirit that he starts saying something now we get a chance to understand the reason why he was the one that was picked for this assignment for the Bible says that there are Stoics and there are Epicureans and some Jews who are listening to him and they are Greek, which means that they love philosophizing about life. <laughs> Epicureans believe that the center of life is just to find happiness and once you find happiness, you're at the center of life. Stoics believed that in order for you to find happiness that you've got to tap into being unified with the universe. And Paul, who has been educated in a Greco-Roman system, is now endowed with the speech and the thought to be able to minister to that culture. 
The Bible says that when he ministered to them that they took him to a higher place, to Areopagus, and began to talk to them about the God who can be known. Your assignment. You'll know your assignment by what provokes you. What provokes you? When you look at it, what do you say? Does it make you say something? When you look at it, does it, does it frustrate you? I'm not trying to make this that deep where you can't figure out what your assignment is. But I am trying to make it so high that you have to reach up with your expectation. Because God is expecting for you to obey. I asked the Holy Spirit what he wanted me to do with this word. He said, I want you to pray over my people. And to pray that every enemy that has been trying to pursue them will not be able to find them. That by the time the enemy gets to the place where they were, they would have moved on. When Egypt was trying to get to the children of Israel, God calls for a pillar of fire to stand between the enemy and his people. And then he parted a Red Sea, made a way out of no way, calls for the people to cross over. And then God did something powerful. He let go of the pillar of fire so that the enemy can chase them. God baited the enemy to follow them into the Red Sea. And Moses stood up and said, take a good look at your enemies. <laughs> For this is the last day. That's not to say that you won't have more enemies. It's just that you won't have this one. <laughs> this one is about to die. God said to pray over you that you will have the heart to know how to move, to know where to move, to understand that if he does give you a vision, coordinate it. To just move but coordinated with wisdom because God is about to bring you into your next assignment. Slip your hands up before the Father. For some of you who haven't been obedient what he's told you to do previously, the reason why you're still there is because you haven't completed your assignment. This is a clarion call to you. Complete your assignment. Do the thing that God called you to do. You're not in that neighborhood just to live. There's somebody that you're supposed to bless. You're not in that neighborhood. You're not in that school just so that you can go to school. There's somebody you're supposed to bless. You're not on that floor just to work. There's somebody there you're supposed to bless. There are doors that are going to open up for you, not just so that you can walk through it, but so that God can give you influence in high places. I feel the anointing of God. I say yes, Lord, yes, I will trust you and with the spirit, oh, the spirit. in my whole heart I will agree, and my answer will be yes, Lord, slip your hands up before the Father. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray over every heart, over every mind, over every assignment 
Now, there are people, oh God, that are supposed to be doing their assignment now. But they have procrastinated. They have waited, oh God. But I pray in the name of Jesus that you would cause for their hearts to be provoked right now. For their hearts to be energized to do the very thing that you're calling for them to do. I pray in Jesus' name, oh God, that you would bless every heart and every mind. Every mind that would say yes to your will and yes to your way, oh God. That the enemies that have been trying to kill them and seek them and to destroy them, I pray in Jesus' name that they will fail every word word that has been spoken over your people that was not aligned with your word I decree and declare that it falls to the ground every person every relationship that is not in line with your will and your word for their life and for their next assignment I thank you father for a shifting of relationships I thank you oh God that you're going to send the right people to speak to them and you're going to uh, uh, subtract the wrong people from around them I thank you oh God for the right relationships the right connections I decree and declare father that everything that has been trying to incapacitate them oh God will not be able to do so father that there will be forgiveness in their hearts that they would learn how to let go of people that they are disappointed in so that they can grow on and move on to the next assignment in their lives I pray in Jesus name oh God that you would by your spirit bring your people together and bring them father into their next assignment by grace in Jesus name we decree it we declare it and it is so. And at the count of three, here's what I want you to do. At the count of three, if you believe it, if you receive that prayer and you want God to move you on to your next assignment and you want God to bless you in your current assignment, at the count of three, I want you to say, yes, Lord, to your will and to your way and give God 10 seconds of a praise. One, two, three, come on. Hello, family. I am so glad that you were able to hear that and to listen to that. I pray that there was something that was said or taught that ministered right down to the recesses of your heart. I believe that God wants us to be about the assignment that he has placed on our lives. And I believe that even though purposes may not change, your assignment will. And it is not good to be stuck because of obligation but to be led by the Spirit of God so that you can do and go on to the thing that God is calling for you to do. Somebody is waiting on you. Somebody is waiting on your obedience. I want to pray for you right now. Father, we know, Father, that our assignments are associated with people. People's needs, their helps, their concerns. And I know that you have graced us to be able to fulfill the needs. I pray in Jesus' name, Father, that you would help us to do the thing that you're calling for us to do, that we would be the assistance and the help that somebody has been praying for. Father, I pray that those who don't know you in the pardoning of their sin would know you. And I pray after knowing you that they would understand their purpose and their assignment in this earth as we move in this day-to-day -day life, as we journey, I pray and ask that you would lead us and guide us and protect us from the enemies that may attach themselves to our assignments. Bless your people now. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, family, that's all the time that we have for today. I hope that the things that has been trying to hold you back from pursuing the very thing that you're called to do from pursuing your assignment. Those enemies of your assignments will have to get up off you because today is the day that the Lord has made and it's time for you to rejoice and be glad in it. It's time for you to do what God has assigned you to do in this season. That's all the time that I have for today. Listen, I want to invite you to services all month long. We're going to be having fire services, revival services every Sunday at 10 o'clock. There's going to be special speakers. It's going to be an awesome time in the Lord. So I want to invite you, 1270 Woodhaven Boulevard right here in Fort Worth. It's going to be an awesome time in the Lord until we meet again, until we see each other again. I want you to be blessed. Peace. Peace.